Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Adventure Church Online. This morning, we're going to have a look at the second emotion that we um, are dealing with. We, we're going through a, a four-part series on four different emotions that we often feel and how we can deal with it and how we can um, yeah, process them in a healthy way. And then we also have a look at what the Bible says about it. This morning, we are going to be having a look at guilt. Now, guilt is one of those emotions that is actually there for a good reason. It's not necessarily bad, but how we deal with it, that's when it can either turn into something, into something that's good or something that is bad. It's kind of a bit like a built-in alarm system to let us know when we've done something wrong. It's not perfect, though, because sometimes you feel guilty even when you haven't done anything wrong. So it's not always the best thing to think, oh, I feel guilty, so I must have done something wrong. Um, it's always the best thing to, to talk to someone you trust about what you're feeling, ask Holy Spirit to show you what's happening inside, and just ask God what's happening inside. He knows us better than we know ourselves. If we go back right to the beginning of the Bible, we'll see that the world had just been created. God was filling the, the world with light and oceans and plants, animals and humans. There was no sin and everything was in perfect balance. Adam and Eve had a very close relationship with God. They would go on long walks together through the garden and they would talk to each other. Everything was absolutely perfect. But we know that sin entered the world when Adam and Eve were tricked by the devil. In Genesis chapter 3, we see that the first time that sin entered the world was just after this moment where Adam and Eve uh, chose to eat the, the fruit and go against what God had said. So Adam and Eve chose their own way. And the first thing that we see if we read that story is that they felt shame. and That they wanted to hide from God. I think this is one of the biggest issues with when we feel guilt. When we let it grow and grow inside of us, it creates a wedge between us and God. And it hurts the relationship that we have with Him. But... This doesn't necessarily mean that guilt is bad. Guilt can show us that there is something wrong and that something needs to be fixed. The issue comes when we choose not to fix the issue. So let's take uh, a few stories out of the Bible and I think it'll help make a little bit more sense about how we can deal with guilt. If we go into the book of Luke, chapter 15, we'll see the story of the prodigal son. Now, this is a story that gets told over and over again, so I'm sure you know it. If you don't, I'm going to quickly run through it so that you, you have a, a little understanding about what's happening. So, to start off, there was a father and a son, and the son wanted to leave the house and take his inheritance and go off and do his own thing. This is a little bit of an insult to his father, because the son was basically saying that he wanted to do things his own way, and he had learned all he needed to learn from the father. So, off the sun goes, and he was very reckless with his money. He spent it on parties and alcohol and other stuff that didn't matter, until there was nothing left. It was at this point that the son realized that he had made a big mistake. He probably felt a lot of guilt for wasting his whole inheritance. So, the son had a choice to make. He could let that guilt grow inside of him, and decide maybe to never return back to his family or he could admit that he had done wrong and go back to his family go back to his dad and ask for forgiveness do you remember what he did well he chose to return to his family and there is that beautiful picture of his father who was waiting for his son's return and as the son came over the hill and the father could see him the father ran out and gave him a big hug and they were able to, uh, to reconcile and make their relationship uh, better. Let's have a look at another story in the Bible. So this comes from Luke chapter 19, and it's the story of Zacchaeus. Now Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and nobody liked tax collectors. This was because the tax collectors worked for the Romans, and they were really nasty people. The tax collectors would take money and give it to the Romans. But they would often tell the people that the tax had gone up and that they needed to pay even more 
and then they would keep that extra bit for themselves. This is what Zacchaeus would do, and everybody knew it. So, let's see what happened when Jesus walked into the town where Zacchaeus was living. So, we can read this in Luke chapter 19 from verse 1. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus, and he was a chief tax collector and was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was so short, he couldn't see over the crowd. So, he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now. I give half of my possessions to the poor, and I, if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. The first thing that I want to point out from the story is that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. And this is always a good start. We always need to be hungry to be in a close relationship with Jesus. The second thing we see is that Jesus wasn't afraid to hang out with the crooks and the sinners in town. Not only that, but he wanted to stay at Zacchaeus' house. What an honor this would have been to have Jesus stay at your house. Imagine what you would do if that had to happen to you. I can probably bet you would start by cleaning your room. Thirdly, it's interesting to see that there was a big change in Zacchaeus' life. In the end of the story, we see that he promised to be truthful. And if he wasn't, he would pay back the amount that he stole, plus four times as much. There must have been a part of Zacchaeus that knew that he was doing wrong. He must have felt guilty. But after meeting Jesus and changing his ways to be truthful and right, I'm sure that he felt much better about himself. Sometimes it's difficult to understand that God will always forgive us when we ask him to, no matter what that sin was. Sometimes the struggle is to forgive ourselves when we mess up. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to believe that Jesus will forgive us. So, to close off, I want to give you a verse to think about this week. And it comes from 1 John chapter 1. Verse 9, and it goes like this. If we confess our sins, he, that's talking about God, is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This verse is a promise that we can hold on to. We can ask God for grace when we feel guilty and he promises to forgive us. Don't hide from God. Take your guilt to him and ask him to forgive you. And remember, you need to forgive yourself as well. So, this week, I want to challenge you. As soon as you start feeling like you may have done something wrong or treated someone unfairly, take that feeling of guilt and turn it into something positive. When we feel guilty, it usually means that something's wrong. So take that guilt to God, ask him to forgive you and do the right thing. Make that situation right with whoever you have done something wrong against, um, and it'll make you feel much better. This is one of the ways that we can bring heaven to earth, by doing the right thing and cleaning up our messes when we sin or do something wrong. This is all uh, the time we have for this morning. I really hope that that was helpful, and I'll see you guys again next week for part three of our uh, Dealing with Emotions sessions. I'll see you then. Cheers.